And now it is my tremendous pleasure to sit down with veteran host, presenter, journalist, and all around Canadian, Mr. Jeff Keeley. You know, when it comes to Gamescom, there really isn't a bigger get than Jeff, so we decided to literalize that notion. Here now, in studio, the uncomfortably large head of Jeff Keeley. Hey, Jeff, welcome. Hey, Michael, good to see you. How's everything? Great. Thanks for playing along with this terrible bit and uh, positioning yourself just so, so this all plays. I love it. How are you doing, man? Are you tired? Are you recovering? Yeah, it was a, a big day with opening night live. Uh, it was a ton of fun to do it. And look, I mean, we joke about the different format of everything this year. It's like we're just trying to find new ways to bring gaming news to folks in a, in a crazy year. But uh, yeah, I'm tired, but really energized. Uh, so it's a special year with the new consoles and everything coming out. Yeah, well, you, you guys definitely really blew it out. Uh, I got to ask just briefly about that stage because I'm on a sound stage. I feel very lucky to be in. But what was with that floor, man? That was incredible. It's cool. Yeah, was that yeah, a monitor? Uh, what was that? No, it was all, yeah, it was this really high-res uh, LED uh, video surfaces that we used. And yeah, we were we knew we weren't going to be in Cologne for Gamescom this year. So we started thinking, you know, what's the right way to produce something in a studio this year in a COVID friendly way. And mm. I've been working with, you know, talking to the IGN folks a lot about this because it's really challenging this year to make anything live. And most of the big events this summer have been pre-taped. And I really wanted to do a live show and have a bit of spectacle to it because, you know, most of the summer I've been here at home uh, broadcasting. So we found a really great studio um, in Los Angeles that is uh, kind of fully COVID compliant. It's the same place that uh, Katy Perry used for the American Idol finale. She did this really cool um, oh. kind of augmented reality performance. Uh, and it's been it's a facility that's been set up here in LA. So we worked with them very early on, put it together. We used some cool augmented reality stuff that was all actually powered by Unreal Engine. Uh, and the game companies worked with us to kind of create all these environments. So yeah, we, we wanted to innovate and try a new way of producing things. And for my team, we really wanted to get this done with a little bit of scale to it because we're starting to work now on the Game Awards for December and we're trying to figure out how to do these things. So yeah, we were really, really happy with uh, with how it looked. The The audience, the numbers were fantastic. We're going to share more on Monday about that, but it was significantly up from last year. So yeah, overall, we're, we're really happy with it. Nice. Well, congratulations. You definitely killed it. Uh, speaking of spectacle, how'd you end up landing Christopher Lloyd? Doc Brown to introduce <laughs> Surgeon Simulator 2. What was it like to perform live with Doc Brown? My God. Yeah, that was a really um, insane thing. So I've always, I, I love Back to the Future. I've always wanted to do something with Back to the Future. About 10 years ago on the Spike Video Game Awards, we tried to do something with Chris Lloyd as Doc Brown and it wouldn't work out. And actually the last trip I took this year back in February, I was in Europe for a couple of weeks and I saw the Back to the Future musical uh, on stage in Manchester, England, where they had just launched it in previews. It was like r right after Valentine's Day this year, I was over in, in Europe for about a month uh, and saw that. So Back to the Future was on my mind. And then the Surgeon Simulator guys called me up a few weeks ago and said, hey, we want to do something fun at Gamescom. And we were wondering, could you do something? Could we maybe get Doc Brown to do something? I think they were kind of inspired by the stuff we had done with uh, the Muppets and uh, the Untitled Goose Game last year at Game Awards. Sure. So I said, hey, let me call up Chris Lloyd, see if he'd be interested. Uh, and he's normally, it's really hard to get him to do That's what I've Doc heard. Brown. Yeah. Um, yeah. He hasn't done it since I think Jimmy Kimmel Live, him and Michael J. Fox did a thing like five years ago. So I thought it was kind of an unlikely possibility, but I talked to him about it and he was kind of open to it, uh, which was interesting. And then, you know, there are a lot of hoops. Yeah, I had to talk to Bob Gale, sort of the uh, co-creator of Back to the Future, make sure mm. he was cool with it. Him and I worked a bit on the script and what it could be. Then we had to have Universal Pictures and Emblem Entertainment say it was okay to do Doc Brown, the character as part of this. Then we had to talk to the Doc Brown makeup team. And there, there are a lot of people involved mm. in doing this. But yeah, Chris was, was open to doing it. Uh, his wife filmed it for him at home. Um, so it was, there was a lot that went into, you know, something that simple. But I, I love the idea of 
Doc Brown coming back, such a classic character. Uh, we need to kind of have some smiles on our faces in 2020. And it was, I mean, super random and wacky. But yeah, I never thought I'd be performing alongside Doc Brown, writing a bit with Chris Lloyd and Bob Gale as part of it. Uh, and he, he couldn't have been nicer about it. Who added the Rick and Morty dig? Was that you? That was, you know, it was funny. It was, uh, that was, a good it was joke. me. Yes, it was me. And then Bob Gale was cool with it. Um, and I actually, I, I texted Justin Roiland and I was like, hey, something fun is coming, um, which is, uh, which is insane. So yeah, I, uh, he couldn't believe that this was happening. So yeah, yeah. it was, uh, it was a really kind of um, wacky, insane uh, kind of, you know, crossover that you would never, never expect. And yeah, Chris was a an awesome sport about it, which was which was great. So yeah, it was something completely unexpected that you wouldn't see at Gamescom, Absolutely. but we wanted to do something fun this year. Yeah, well, you already kind of touched on, uh, certainly COVID is a big reason it's different this year, but you also uh, touched on, we're on the cusp of the next console generation. And as someone who's been involved in Gamescom repeatedly, I just wanted to ask, this is my first year on this beat. What, how is it different when we're on the cusp of a console generation? How does that make Gamescom? Does it, does it amp everything up? Just what's that like? Yeah, look, it's a, it's such a weird year because we're on the verge of a new console generation. Normally, a Gamescom in a new year, this would be when hundreds of thousands of people are getting to play PS5 or the new Xbox for the first time. Uh, and, you know, none of that's happening, right? Uh, mm. I, I got to play with ps5 i don't know it's probably a month or month and a half ago uh Lex. but you know yeah no no i was I'm very <laughs> lucky and they took it away very quickly but uh yeah it's like it's been you know not many people have gone hands-on with ps5 i don't think anyone has really gone hands-on with the the new xbox yet and they're coming out this year so yeah very different year uh a challenging year i think for game developers and for fans uh look it's everyone keeps saying it's like things are so spread out this summer you know it's like no one really mm. knows what the launch lineup is we don't know the date or the price for either system which is like really late i mean we're moving into september now and we don't know that um yep. so yeah it's an odd year but it's exciting we only get one of these years every six or seven years so uh yeah i, I love gamescom as an event but look we all knew that three hundred thousand people getting together in germany was certainly not happening this year yeah. uh so i like that gamescom has has pivoted the plan. Uh, Opening Night Live did extraordinarily well, you know, significantly up uh, by orders of magnitude from last year. So there's still interest in all the content, but it just it has to be presented differently. Yeah. All right. Well, before I run out of time, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. Uh, you are a host, you are a journalist, but you're also one of us. You're a gamer above all else. Uh, and you do get special access and get to play some of these things a little bit before the rest of us. So uh, just as a convention goer, what have been the biggest highlights of the convention so far for you? What are you personally amped about? What games are you looking forward to the most? Yeah, uh, great question. Uh, you know, Ratchet and Clank looked amazing yesterday. I was really happy to show that off uh, from Insomniac. It's just there's so much going on the screen. Like, it, it really does feel next gen to me, which is exciting. And that's what everyone wants is that sort of feeling of how games are going to take a leap forward. Uh, I was really excited to show more of 12 Minutes uh, and the amazing cast they have for that game mm -hmm. uh, with, with Willem Dafoe and James McElvoy and mm. Daisy Ridley. So that was, a, <laughs> that was a cool announcement and an awesome indie game as well. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, my producer's uh, peeping up in my ear and saying that I have to ask, you got some hands on time with the PS5. Are you willing to say anything about that? Thoughts? Positive, negative, yeah, vibes, no, I, yeah, I was, a sound you want to make? I was make? super lucky to, um, <laughs> yeah, I got to play it and they took it away very quickly. But no, the, um, the thing that I said in my video and I'll say again is like the adaptive triggers are really unique and different. And on opening night live, Mike from Insomniac talked a bit about that and how in Ratchet and Clank, you know, there's certain guns where if you, you pull down the adaptive trigger, you can kind of feel tension points. They're going to affect, you know, whether it's a single shot or a double shot. Uh, and I think back to, you know, games that have active reload, right? Like even back in the day, like Gears of War, there was an active reload point. You always were looking mm. on the screen, right? To see sort of, you know, the, the when you'd be in the oh, zone yeah. for the bar. And now you'd, you'll feel it, right? And like those kind of things, I think, are really going to affect gameplay. Uh, so that was the thing that sh stood out to me the most was the adaptive triggers on the controller and how every game will implement them in different ways, which I think is really unique and different. So that was the thing that I felt is going to have the biggest impact on how we play games. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And I only got to play Astrobot was the only title that I've played with it. So um, I can't wait to check out, you know, more games as part of it. Uh, I wanted and Ratchet and Clank, I'm sure, is going to play incredible with it as well. So that, that was the thing that I, I stood out to me the most about the sort of overall PS5 experience. Gotcha. Uh, all right. Well, we're almost out of time, but I wanted to at least throw one gotcha question at you. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But Turnabout is fair play. And I love the little I'm interstitials ready. in O&L where uh, you ask people, what about this time has made them, uh, uh, what has it made them appreciate about gaming? Uh, something they may have had reawakened or taken for granted, but this time's really brought to the fore. So what you playing in quarantine and how has quarantine made you appreciate gaming more? Yeah, good questions. Uh, the game I've been playing recently is uh, is Fall Guys, which is just like, you know, we had a, a season it's two got everyone. on the show. And it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just fun, right? And I love mm -hmm. that it's just a simple pick up and play game. Uh, and yeah, that's what we needed this summer, right? Was something that was bright and uplifting. And I played Last of Us 2 all the way through and, you know, it was a phenomenal game, but just, you know, dark, right? And violent. And I love that Fall Guys is just something bright and hopeful, um, mm -hmm. which was which was really, really good. And so that's probably been the thing that's it kind of been a revelation this summer to me and as you said to all of us. And then, uh, you know, I think quarantine has made me appreciate the power of this medium to to bring everyone together and, and keep us connected um, around this. I think if anything, 2020 has shown the importance of games just to culture in general. Uh, look, I mean, there, you know, there are no movies coming out. I mean, they're just starting to come out now. Uh, there's no live music, but games, uh, I think there's, I think there's a little bit more respect for the importance games play in the entertainment landscape. And that's something I've been really passionate about my whole life and career. Uh, so that's something that I'm glad that there's been this sort of greater appreciation of this medium and what it means to the world, which, you know, obviously is, is at a passion point for me and one of the reasons I do the Game Awards every year. So yeah. I, I think that general sort of appreciation and respect for gaming is something really nice to, nice to finally see in 2020. And I hope that this is, you know, a lot of people said, like, once quarantine is over and once we're in 2021, I think there's going to be this tide change hopefully where people do truly respect games as the most important form of entertainment which all of us you know anyone watching this show uh, you know likely already agrees with that fact but i think there's now a broader appreciation of um the gaming medium and what it means to people so that's that's really personally gratifying for me absolutely and well said that is all the time we have but thank you so much for uh taking some time to chat with me jeff it means a lot Thanks, man. Uh, good luck on the rest of the Daily Shows. Who's the next big interview? Uh, next up, we've got Luigi Antonio, director of 12 Minutes, which you shouted out. There I cannot go. wait for that game. That looks really phenomenal. Yeah, like it's, you. no, it's, I mean, that's such a game a you cool got to respect. You got yeah. A, yeah, amazing cast. So uh, awesome. Well, good luck with that, and thanks for having me on. Enjoy the rest of the convention. Thanks, man. Well, that's one big interview down, only one to go before I get to smash up the video wall with a sledgehammer. First thing in my contract.